Hi everyone. Today uh, I'm joining you. I'm pleased to be joining you uh, from um, my my parents' house, where I am excited to be visiting them after their vaccination. So there is light at the end of the tunnel, everyone. Um, and and today I, I want to talk about um, a, a sort of a, a topic that I don't often talk about, Haskell 98. So I believe, I hope, we'll be able to get through this video without needing to turn on any single extension um, because there's an interesting detail buried in Haskell 98 that I want to explore, and that's about new types and their strictness. Um, so uh, this, this actually, when first exploring this, this came as a surprise to me. So I've been doing Haskell for some time, so it's, it's not often that I get a surprise in Haskell 98 code. So this was, this was exciting. Um, so the idea here is that different ways of declaring data types can lead to different runtime behavior. That's not really a surprise, but let's look at the details. So I can make a data wrapper around int, so I'm just going to call it data. Um, and it's going to store an int. And I can also have a strict data, mix strict, and this is going to have a strict field with a bang. Um, so note this is not a bang pattern which does need an extension, but this is actually just a strict field in a data type which does not. That's part of Haskell 98. And I can also make a new type that looks like this. Um, okay, so let's just make sure I haven't made any silly mistakes yet. Nope, all, all good. Um, so then I want to define a function which is a little bit strange, but not so terribly strange. So we're going to call them all f. So f data takes mc data, and and it's just going to put n in a list with one. And then we have we're going to call it s data. Whoops, n there. And then we're going to have uh, I guess this last one n data mc new type n one n. Okay, does that still work? Good. Okay, so if I call f data of mc data of five, then indeed I get the list one five. Okay, the question is, what happens when I call these different functions with bottoming expressions? So if I call f data undefined, what do we get? Well, we get a, we get an error. Right? Because here, when I call fdata, the very first thing that fdata has to do when it's running is to pattern match on its, on its input. And so it's going to evaluate its input until it gets a value and then check to make sure that the value is actually a mcdata thing. Um, and then, if it is, it's going to extract the n out and put it into the list. Um, so it's no surprise that if I call f data with undefined, we get an exception here at runtime. Because the, the attempting to evaluate to a value part, that's what fails. Um, what if I call f with, um, sorry, f data with muck data of undefined? Well, that also has an error, but but note this error is slightly different. So I'm going to make some more space down here, um, and so here. The error is not actually in the computation of in this f data function, but in the printing out, right? f data still got to the point that it produced a list with the element one in it, and then we had an exception. So actually, if I call take one from f data of muck data undefined, that's hunky dory. Right? Because we, we get this list out, and the first element is very well defined. It's just this n that when we evaluate that, um, uh, we, get undefi uh, we get undefined. So what's going on here? Well, when I call muck data undefined, this part here, whoops, my highlighting in Emacs is a little strange. But um, when I get to this part here, what this is doing is this is packaging up a bottom inside of a box. And so until I uh, look at that bottom inside the box, I'm not going to run into any trouble. So that means that in evaluating f data, this n here is still going to be bottom, but um, I haven't sort of run into it yet. And so until I print that bottoming expression out, I don't see the error. In contrast, up here when I call f data of undefined, the problem is before I ever get to the list, it has to do with the pattern match. Um, OK, so this is what happens with a normal data type. So let's look at what happens with our, our other varieties here. So if I call f or s data, um, well, I guess that, that doesn't make any sense. It shouldn't be called s data. I can't, I can't let that stand. That's terrible. This should be f strict is really what I should have called it. And this should really be f new type. Um, OK, that still works. So if I call f strict on undefined, no surprise, we immediately get an exception thrown. Um, and, and it's the exact same reason, right? Because I need to evaluate this 
um, I need to evaluate the argument to f strict down to something that has this muck strict tag, but that evaluation immediately goes awry. So no good. If I call f strict of muck strict undefined, I also immediately get an error. No bracket one. And just, just to confirm this, if I call take one of this thing, I still get the exception. Right? And so that's because this is a strict data type. It means that as soon as we see the call to mcstrict, oh, I don't want to repeat that. Oops, what's going on here? Um, as soon as we see the call to mcstrict, it's going to evaluate the argument to, to mcstrict uh, so that we, um, or it's going to evaluate that argument. And so if that argument is undefined, we're immediately going to fail. Right? And so here in in the call to f strict, we do force the argument to f strict, looking for this mixed strict. But when we force that argument, we also end up forcing um, the the undefined, even when the mixed strict is here. Right? That's the notion of a strict data type. But what I found surprising when I first came across it was what happens with the new type. So if I call f new type of uh, of undefined, well, we get undefined, but curiously, we start we we get some output here. And so let's see, does that work? To, can I say take one of f new type of undefined? I can, and it works. So that's very interesting. Um, so when I first learned about new types, the, the, the explanation was that a new type is really just a strict data type with one constructor. Um, and this shows that that's not exactly the case. So new type constructors are indeed strict. But forcing them does not work the way that forcing a data type works. What happens with a new type is that at runtime, there is no mcnew type tag. Right? So I said with, with mcstrict and mcdata that we evaluate this thing, and then we look for that tag, and then we can extract out the int. Well, a new type, the, the key property of a new type is that this new type type has the exact same runtime representation as int. There is nothing else stored. And so there's no notion of evaluating the box and looking for a tag, because there's no tag. Um, and so what that means is that this thing that looks like a pattern match, and it looks like it should be strict, is in fact not strict. There's nothing about this that forces any evaluation. And so over here, when I plug n into the list, we haven't done any evaluation. So provided nothing later forces this value of n in my list, then we don't see the error. So similarly, I could take length of f new type undefined. And that works fine, because I'm never going to force the elements of that list. Um, so if we, uh, let's see, there's one other thing that I wanted to do. Oh, that's right. And to look at f new type of muck new type undefined. And that also has the exact same behavior as um, f new type of just plain old undefined. Right? We get a little bit of printing, and then we get the exception when we get to uh, evaluating this um, the second element of the list. And that's because, again, calling this mcnew type constructor, that doesn't change the runtime behavior because the mcnew type constructor doesn't exist at all at runtime. Um, and so that means that, that when we force these things, we get, we get different behavior than we do with strict data where the constructor does exist at runtime. Um, so I hope you found this interesting. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.